Welcome back to the Bro Country Podcast. My name is Joey, and as always, I am joined by... Hey man, it's Chris over here. What's going on tonight, Joey? Not a whole lot, man. We got a special one tonight. We do. It's going to be a good one. Super excited for this one. Yeah, most definitely. Guys, tonight we have a very special guest on the show. He's an up-and-coming singer, songwriter out of Nashville, Roman Alexander. Roman, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate you taking the time to chat with us tonight, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. So I guess we can really just go ahead and jump right into it, man. So, you know, what was your first introduction to country music and kind of how did you get to where you are today? Oh, man, that's a loaded question. Uh, <laughs> it is, well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, oh, yeah, man, you know, it started, for me, it's, uh, it starts in my, the back of my dad's car um, and also the back of my grandfather's uh, 1999 Suburban, which was uh, just a I mean, my first introduction was Elvis Presley and Johnny Cash. Um, but then as I got into middle school and high school, uh, I noticed that, you know, my buddies were listening to Keith Urban, and Kenny Chesney. My mom had to playing around the house. And then, you know, fast forwarding a little bit into high school when I had my own band and was playing in the bars, uh, I found out that girls really like country music. And so I uh, <laughs> did it for the ladies for the most part. Not, not, not afraid to admit that. <laughs> I'd say a lot of people have that same reason. <laughs> Uh, I mean, that, those are the, in my opinion, the two two greatest things about country music is number one, the, the fans and, and the live show, uh, and then I guess the female fans. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. That's right. That's right, man. That's so you, right, you, man. you started playing live young then. Yeah. So I started playing. Man, I was I was probably seven years old when I started playing live. And oh wow. You know what? My uncle has a country band back home, and you know they're playing originals and covers, but. You know, when you're that young, you find yourself playing the same uh, cover song. You, know, you don't really, your repertoire isn't very big. So it was Johnny Cash's False Prison Blues, Ring of Fire, Elvis Presley's Burning Love. So uh, it, it was uh, it was cool, I guess, probably for people to see a seven-year-old playing those songs. Um, but then, you know, my, my mom would be there, and I'd be singing about shooting a man, in, you know, just to watch him <laughs> die. And, you know, I had a math test the next day. So. That's funny. Yeah, that's awesome. That's the musical school for you right there to start out like that. Yeah, dude. It, it was fun. Um, and then, you know, as you get into high school, uh, our friends are playing, you know, football on Friday nights and I'm playing in bars on Friday nights. So uh, I always made sure that my the bar I was playing at was always the after party um, or, or whatever venue. I'd, I'd tell the venue owner or the, the bar owner, like, hey, look, I, I, my friends are coming in uh, and I would always have to lie and say that they were 21 and up. <laughs> That's fun. And they'd show up and they couldn't get in. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You're, you're from Kansas, right, Roman? Missouri, the better half. Missouri. Oh, City. there you go. There we go. But, uh, yeah, Kansas City, Missouri is where I'm from. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I get that a lot. It's, it cracks me up. I don't know why people decided to call a city Kansas City and have <laughs> Kansas City in Missouri. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. But So uh, how long have you been in Nashville? Um, man, I've been here six years, so it's been fun. I, I don't get me wrong; I, I love Nashville, but uh, it's grown so much in the last six years. I don't remember when you know when it was when it was ever this big. I, I don't know the last time you guys came down here. Uh, when was that? We've both been there within what the last month, Joey. Yeah, I was actually we're there the, the same weekend, but not together. We were there well, it was probably three weeks ago now. Yeah, I think three weeks ago. It's yeah. pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. It, it's wild how much it's grown. It is. It yeah. is crazy the lines to get into the bars on broadway were like forever long it seemed like and then just the city as a yeah. whole has boomed i mean my first time in nashville was probably about six years ago myself actually just visiting and it's even from then till now it's just so different great city yeah though. i think i'll just stay home and drink though i, I love going out don't be <laughs> wrong but uh i, I find out it's just it, it's not even so much the atmosphere because i love being around people and, and love drinking but mm -hmm. i think for me it's like I don't like waking up the next morning and checking in my bank statement. Oh, that man. hurts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a good time, though. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's, it's Nashville. That's Nashville. That, that, that aspect has not changed at all. The atmosphere is still really fun, but it just gets a little more expensive every year. Yeah. What was Nashville like this past year and a half when everything was kind of shut down and the world kind of stopped? Well, I forgot to mention that, yeah, it, was, it wasn't so fun, I guess, during COVID or phone anywhere for anybody, but... Uh, Man, it was weird. It was weird to see Broadway dead. Like it literally everything was closed. It was a ghost town, and it was it was really sad to see. Um, and then on top of that, we had the bombing. So I mean, mm -hmm. it, 
yeah, it was just a. Uh, it, it was sad. That's really all I can say. A lot of people lost their livelihoods. Um, yeah. But when it came back and they opened back up, I mean, it was strong. I mean, that first weekend that they opened up, it was it was heavy hitting. It was pretty. It was pretty cool to see the bar life come back to come back to life. Yeah, absolutely. I remember seeing like posts on social media kind of circulate and go viral of Broadway, just completely like just a ghost town, you know. And I'm definitely glad to see things opening back up, most places anyway. Um, and see them, these business owners getting back to what they need to be doing, you know, making some money it, and musicians exactly, too. No. It's it's cool. It's really cool to be able to get back on the road and then like be able to employ my friends again. I mean, my yeah. band members are my buddies, so it feels good to be able to give them a job. Um, because you yeah. know, I was fortunate enough to have a publishing deal through all of this and, and still to have one. So I had money coming in um, and, and still do. And they uh, not, I had some friends that weren't so fortunate. So, yeah, absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah. So, speaking of just the past year, last year you dropped an EP, Between You and Me, which the title track, Between You and Me, already has a ton of success. And, like, on Spotify, I believe it has over 21 million streams between both versions that are on there. So could you tell us just a little bit about the creative process behind that project and what that was like? Uh, it's a blur, that's for sure. Actually, I just <laughs> wrote with the girl I wrote it with today. Um, her name's Allison Feltz, and then the guy who produced it is Jared Kahn. He also wrote it as well. But, man, it's it's cool. It, it's a, it's a, Like I said, it's a blur. I mean, I wake up every day, and there's been 100,000 streams per day, over 100,000 streams on one version. That's just the, the version that my friend Ashley Cook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so... I, you know, momentum starts to die down after a little bit, and I'm thankful for the love that it got on the streaming platforms and still is getting. But when it started dying down, um, you know, the EP had been out for a little bit. I think it was time to amplify it a little bit, so I called Ashley and I was like, hey, what do you think about being on the song? It was really just an instant yes. So she really helped bring it back to life, and, and um, you know, it's, like I said, it has a life now. It's really cool to watch it grow every day. But the process, I mean, overall, that was a song that I remember sending to my team. And within a matter of like 20 minutes after sending it, my publisher was like, this is it. And, and you don't get that response from him very often. So I knew he had something there. Oh, that's cool, man. Did you all record it the first time? Did you record it during quarantine? Or was that something that kind of was in the can before in quarantine? Or, or how long ago did that kind of start? It almost We wrote that song almost two years ago, if not two yeah. years ago. Um, so, yeah, I, COVID wasn't even a word. And uh, it, when we when we wrote it, and then it came to life during that time, which was very scary to be able to put out music during that time. But it it, it really uh, it it shocked me the the results I got out of it. But the song itself, I mean, I we recorded it, and I didn't get the demo back. For, God, I don't know. It, I didn't get the demo back for probably like two months, three months, and I forgot about the song honestly. And then whenever I heard it again, I was like, oh, this is uh. This is pretty special. I love the acoustic version that's on there, too. That's fantastic. Man, I like those acoustic versions. I, I think the whole little acoustic thing I did, I thought that was cool. Uh, yeah. From the numbers, I, I, I guess I didn't push it too hard. I guess people didn't really think it was that cool, but I thought it was pretty damn cool. Hell yeah, man. I think the uh, the Hot Country playlist on Spotify helped out with that second version with Ashley, which, I mean, it's a phenomenal duet, but I was actually going to ask you about it, so I'm glad you brought it up. and. Uh, I saw on your TikTok, it was a little ways back when uh, you guys did like a duet and uh, it was kind of like you asked her to pretty much hop on and do a version of it. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, she's, uh, she, like I said, she, she's an incredible human being. I mean, she really is. Uh, she's just she's just a, a great person and she's mm-hmm. so talented. So it was really a no brainer. But whenever I first met her, it was in Key West and my first interaction with her ever was I was very intoxicated. Hey, what up? My name's Roman. And she wanted nothing to do with me. So I'm glad she gave me a chance. She brought it to life, that's for sure. That's awesome, man. And there's another one on there that's really been pretty good for you, too, uh, that I'm a huge fan of cocktail conversations. So- oh, well, yep, that's my, uh, that is my favorite one. I'm not going to lie. If I had to choose one, that's my favorite. Such a smooth, just really good country song, man. Tell us what that experience was like writing that producing it what was that like same thing i mean i man i threw out the title so many times like cocktail conversations in rights and mm-hmm. it got shot down so many times and uh it wasn't that it was a bad title it just nobody knew how to approach it and then my buddy dylan altman who wrote barefoot blue jean night take a little ride for jason Alvey, um 
it was almost like it was a no-brainer to him. He was like, oh, yeah, I got this. I got this. I can do this. Let's just write it. And so it, the the song came out of the gate just running. It was really cool to watch it come to life. The demo wasn't too much different than the final production. I mean, production-wise, yes, it was much bigger now, but mm-hmm. uh, the structure was, was still pretty much the same. We didn't really change much. That's awesome. Where, where did you guys record it? So everything we recorded, the whole EP, everything I'm still recording, you would think it's going to be done in some big elaborate studio, but it's actually done in my producer's room. Um, everything, wow. that's the beauty of just technology today. It is, and that is crazy, yeah. The production is amazing on that song, too, by the way. So that is <laughs> That just makes it even crazier. Yeah, it, it, he's a freak of nature. They don't make people like him anymore, uh, <laughs> in my opinion. And... He's one of those guys that he can just do more with less. He just knows how to adapt and make things cool. And I mean, we do all, we track all the live instruments. We do the drums and the guitars, and, uh, whatever. But like tomorrow I'm going in and recording new music and finishing up our last song of, of the stuff. And uh, I mean, it's literally, you would think I'm gonna go and record in some elaborate studio, but nope, it's just his room. And there are offices all around us. It's, it's really something else, but it's cool. That's awesome, man. That is cool, man. Tell us a little bit about just kind of like making connections in Nashville. And I mean, obviously, you know, Jerry Flowers and Josh Osborne and Jesse Frazier and Trevor Rosen. I mean, you, there's huge heavy hitters on this project. I mean, how do you move to Nashville and end up, you know, with these huge, huge figures in Nashville? Uh, a little bit of luck. Uh, but yeah, a little bit everybody needs a little of that, don't they? little bit of luck i think that luck is one of the most underrated things everybody wants to say that they did it all themselves but luck i I can't describe luck i don't know how it works just one of those mysterious things that god puts together but um i think persistence is is the most important thing i I knew the direction i wanted to go in i didn't know how it was going to get there but i knew the people i wanted to work with and people i had in mind and just took a lot of uh, a lot of writing, and then I was able to, you know, one thing led me to another where I was able to write with Jerry, and then my first write with Jerry, I wrote Bad for Me um, with him, and that from there was uh, the little production duo, because he co-produced the project, and so did Jerry, or so did Jared. So yeah. uh, having both of them on that song and hearing the demo that I got back from them was like, oh, I got to work with these dudes. Um, And then Jerry opened a lot of doors. He introduced me to a lot of people. And then right after the project came out, I started working with Trevor Rosen from Old Dominion. And so I uh, had the, you know, the fortune of being able to play shows with them this year and then able to, uh, you know, we're going to record a song tomorrow that that I wrote with him and and Brad Thurston from Old Dominion as well. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's badass. It's fucking cool, man. It's it's awesome. That is cool, man. I mean, speaking of Old Dominion, I mean, that's, uh, we obviously noticed you had opened some shows for them. That's got to be pretty, that's got to be a pretty surreal moment being out there on stage with those guys. Dude, they're freaking cool. They're just cool dudes. I mean, there is no, they're like rock stars. They're legitimate rock stars, but they don't act like it. Like they're, you know, they're. They're family guys. They're fun. They're outgoing. They're hardworking, but they're just they're just fun. Like that's the best way to describe them. There's no, um, I'm better than you. Uh, we're rock stars. They I mean when they step on stage, yeah, they do take on that persona. They're they're kick ass. But whenever it's just them backstage, it's always like, hey, do you want to get a shot? You want to do a shot? <laughs> you want to have you want to have a beer? And uh, of course you're gonna be like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Hell yeah, man. Speaking of just shows that you've done and have coming up, I noticed you're uh, opening for Sam Hunt here coming up soon, right? Yeah, yeah, that's on August 12th, dude. I'm I'm stoked for that one. Yeah. Sam's always been one of my biggest influences. Uh, I think I remember the first time I ever saw Sam Hunt. I took a girl to on a date. She was older than me, so I thought I was the coolest guy ever. <laughs> and I took her to a concert, and it was Sam Hunt playing. He came out with a flat build hat, gold chain, and like this long red t-shirt. And I remember thinking, like, who is this guy? Why is this? What is this? Is not country. Mm-hmm. And he started playing, and all the girls went crazy. And I took back everything I said. <laughs> so he's he's uh, he's been one of my favorites. He really opened my eyes to songwriting. I remember being more focused on his songs than I was on my date that night. You know, and you're young mm-hmm. dude thinking, okay, I'm gonna take this girl on a date, and I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna get lucky. And and that. Uh, that was not the case, man. I, I was so stoked to hear those songs and see music like that brought to life was, was really interesting. Where, yeah. where are you opening for him at, man? 
Uh, I'm opening for, up for him in uh, Oklahoma. So little uh, little place called Powkaw. I don't know what it's an Indian reservation, I believe. Oh wow, the, that's really awesome. The venue is incredible looking. So yeah, excited to be there. Have you met Sam yet? Yeah, yeah, I've met him and been fortunate enough to meet the guys in his crew a couple times, and they're all just good people. They're just pros, especially this guy. They're all friends who have been with each other since the very beginning when Sam started, and they've just kind of come up together. It's been uh, for that that right there tells me that Sam is an extremely loyal guy, um, mm-hmm. and that's just something that I think I try to live by is just staying loyal to my team. Absolutely, yeah. man. Most definitely, man. I, I saw Sam live for the first time just a few years back, and he's a phenomenal songwriter, man. And he puts on a heck of a live show too. Agreed. No, he's he's an incredible, incredible person too. I mean, just somebody who revolutionized the way country music was, mm-hmm. or it is currently what we're listening to. Yeah, most definitely, man. So so far in your musical career, what are some of your favorite venues that you've got to play at, or just favorite cities you've got to visit? Well, I wasn't able to tour much just during COVID, but um, uh, man, recently it's been, I mean, obviously I played that played in Texas. Anywhere in Texas is really cool. Just the fans are rowdy. The <laughs> girls are pretty. The beer is really cold. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm like dead serious. I had the coldest beer I've ever had in my entire life in Texas. <laughs> That's um, awesome. I don't know what they do, but everything's just cool. Everything's they better. know what they're doing. It's just, it's just a, they do. They just know they've mastered the art of a live show in Texas for sure so um, yeah pretty awesome we'll have to get to texas one day chris and go check out a show i know it's been on our bucket list for a while yeah, i was gonna say there's <laughs> there's been about 12 shows at billy bob's here recently that i've that i've been dying to just hop on a plane and get down there but <laughs> haven't, have haven't made it yet we i have not been to texas no N- no me neither where are you guys based out of so i actually live in ohio and chris lives over in west virginia so how did you guys meet? That's my question. Yeah, tell him, tell him, tell him the quick version, Joey. <laughs> Man, that's a funny story. And and those of you that listen to the show normally probably already know this, but. Uh Chris and I, we met, man, it was a little over two years ago. Uh, we were both in uh, the Luke Combs like, Facebook fan club page or whatever. And mm-hmm. one day we just got to chatting online about something related to Luke. And we just came, became online buddies. And uh, I don't know, fast forward probably about a year, he sends me a message. And he's like, hey, man, are you going to Luke's show in Columbus tomorrow? And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to go to the one in, in Indiana on Friday. And this was like a Wednesday, I think, or something. And he was like, hey, I've got an extra ticket if you want to go with me. And I was like, say less, let's do it. <laughs> so uh, we met up at the show and have went to, the God, I don't even know how many concerts now together. and no. started How many more we got coming? Oh, dude, mm. quite a few. This, thank God that concerts are back. But, um, yeah, so we started this podcast last year, and he's came over to my house for a get-together and all kinds of stuff. So it's pretty cool just how music brings people together. On a side note, isn't isn't – Luke Combs, just the worst country singer of all time. Oh, man. <laughs> Joey removes party from a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, dude, he's just... You know, you get those artists that are just once in, in a generation, like artists, uh, and he's just one of those. I mean, you get Eric Church's... I think the last time we had anybody that close, I feel like when it compared to like Eric Church was, you know... Uh, I'm going to go as far as saying Waylon Jennings, but I'll say yeah, it's up there, man. It's cool. Mm-hmm. It's just uh, yeah. the way that it's untouchable. There's just something yeah. so different about this guy. And, and Luke is just one of those. And Luke's just a really cool dude. Yeah. Have, have you got yeah. to meet him yet or work with him at all? I, I have. I've met him a few times, and he's just always been like the nicest dude in the world. Super genuine. Um, you know, what you see is what you get. Legitimately. <laughs> Legitimately. And, yeah. you know, we've we've interviewed a couple people on the show before that have worked and met Luke, and they've said the same exact thing. Like, that's all you ever hear about the guy is that he's just genuine, super nice, and just humble. Thankful. Yeah. Well, why don't you guys get him on the podcast? Man, it sounds like you're the connection, man. Help us out. <laughs> sure, sure. You know what? I'll just call him right now. Appreciate <laughs> it, man. Let's make it happen. That's right. But, uh... Um, it's crazy though. You're right. Just like a generational type artist like that, and I know you mentioned Eric Church. We're huge church fans too, and yeah, we got I mean, a huge church show coming up. Oh yeah, we, we scored tickets to the uh, George Strait and Eric Church show down in Atlanta at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. So that'll be pretty sweet. Have you seen Eric live? I have I've seen him numerous times. I've seen George Strait numerous times as well. Oh man, uh, 
So I had the opportunity. I was a merch guy for a long time. So I, started, I was working with Easton Corbin for about three years. Uh, and then before that, I was with Shane and Joe. So, and then Jody Messina as well. So I, I had my fair share of being around country concerts just from working merch. That's You've sweet. been around, man. That is awesome. Those are some awesome experiences. Shenandoah. Man, it was cool. And then those guys are just, uh, just awesome. I mean, dude, I, I was, when you're 19 years old and you get to live those experiences, I mean, that's, that was freaking cool. I wasn't even 21 yet, and I was getting to do that. So it was cool. Heck yeah, that's an awesome experience, man. So obviously you've got to do quite a bit as far as music just in your life, it sounds like. What have been some like the most memorable experiences you've had so far? Uh, well, getting to play my first amphitheater show was pretty freaking cool. I really can't um, can't really complain about that. That was that was really cool, but dude, I think you know my my favorite experience in country music in, in general was way before I was even here in Nashville and it was when I was in high school and it was when I got to see Glenn Campbell play live and it was on his last tour and I thought that was it's hard to beat that I've been looking for the experience to try to beat that feeling that I had when I saw him play so that's awesome man but yeah I know a little bit ago you mentioned that you're going to be recording tomorrow do you get any uh, future plans on some new music that's coming out that you can spill the beans on or yeah dude new music that's really, that's really what I got to say. I mean, anything I try to, I try not to keep secrets. I mean, I, I was like, yeah, look, here's what's coming out. Here's, yeah. here's what's gonna happen. I can't say when, but it's coming. Uh, I, I guess I won't say the name of the song just because we're not, we're not fully done with the production process yet. So anything is bound to change. I don't sure. want false promises more than anything. Right. But uh, my biggest thing is getting out on the road. So touring is gonna be a big one in the fall. Uh, I, I mean. I wish I could just announce the dates already because there's going to be quite a bit of dates. It's going to be pretty expensive. That's awesome, man. That's awesome, man. If you're anywhere close to us, we will be there for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I believe second week in October. I'm going to go ahead and say the second week of October. Second weekend is Ohio. So oh. Ohio. Not, oh. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Ohio. Well, sometime right. in the fall. <laughs> if, that, if that's true, we will be there for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I will make sure I keep you guys updated because uh, I assume if you guys drink any alcohol in general, I assume we should probably have a pre or post show drink. That absolutely, would be, man. That would be amazing. I'll shoot you a and DM. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in West Virginia as well. I do know that. Heck yeah. Oh man. You're gonna be you're gonna We're be gonna all go. over the place, man. That's awesome. Good for you. Very busy year. Very busy year coming up. I'm, dude, I'm just stoked to be able to do this. I mean, it's just be able to live this uh live this life and, and be able to do things i've been doing is it's just awesome yeah i think it shines that, through just awesome, with man. uh like even just watching on social media man i can tell that you just love what you do and i think that's awesome and that just really appeals to people that you're just genuine and just have a good time especially seeing like the clips of the live shows and just interacting with the fans and stuff like that so that's awesome dude i love i mean my social teams are like you need to post like things other than live shows right now I'm like i you guys got to take it easy on me. We haven't had live shows in over a year. So I'm going to post as many live show photos I can to make up for that, whether it annoys <laughs> people or not. I, that's what I love. I love the crowd interaction. This is why I do it. I didn't do this to be a songwriter. I didn't do this to um, do anything. Really, I wasn't even trying to aspire to be a songwriter. I just kind of stumbled into it because that's what I needed to do to write the most authentic thing I could to betray myself and, and to, to shine, let people see who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, and once that piece of the puzzle kind of came together with the EP, I was like, okay, it's time to go tour. Cause that's really what I wanted to do. So I, I annoyed my team. I was like, get me on the road, get me on the road, get me on the road. And COVID happened, and uh, I was quickly hushed on that. That was a that was no no to go on the road. So uh, yeah. finally able to to do it, and I'm taking full advantage of it. Hell that's yeah, awesome, man. man! Making up for lost time last year. That's right. Yeah, I'm going to be very busy this fall. Very fortunate to visit this fall, but next year I think is going to be a, a, a very big one, just touring-wise, and then hopefully just overall career-wise. Tell us a little bit about what you'd like to do other than music. Obviously, music's the focus of your life right now, but what other kind of stuff do you like to get into? Golf, man. That's been recently just golfing. Um, I, I never really had anything. That's why I started golfing. I never really had anything that I was bored. If I wasn't playing music, I was bored. And you can only do that so much before you start getting burnt out. You know, just you're a human mm-hmm. being. You get burnt out on things. And yeah. I tried cooking, burnt everything I cooked. I like <laughs> cooking. Don't get me wrong, good at it. But, it t- man, it takes me like five days to, to work one recipe up. And then um, golf was just something I felt like I, 
it didn't come easy. It still does not come easy, but that's what I like. It's a challenge. Um, and I went on vacation and, and my, my publisher was like, Roman, you got to learn how to hit the ball because you suck. <laughs> from there on anytime anybody tells me i suck at something uh, i do one of two things where i'm like yeah you're right you know what this is probably not worth my time or i go into i'm gonna show you mode and completely just try to get as good as i possibly can and that's what i'm trying to do with golf i i've never been good at golf man i tried probably twice in my life and no good <laughs> so props to you it's for sticking with it. it takes time dude it takes a lot of work and I think I went from playing once a month, maybe. Now I'm playing like twice a week, three times a week. So That's fun. There's probably though. a ton of good courses down there in Nashville, I would think. There are fantastic courses. Um, there's one in particular that I absolutely love, but it's a private course that I probably won't be able to afford to live on anytime soon. Um, you have to live there in order to play it. But, man, I think I'm, what I'm most excited about is just playing the courses on the road when I'm going to be traveling. I think that's one reason why I got into golf was just – I knew it was something I was able to do whenever I was touring. It took yeah. real time during the day before the show. Heck yeah. Well, Roman, that's really all we had as far as questions, man. Did you have anything that you wanted to share with our listeners, any of your fans that are listening to the show? Go listen to the music. That's it. Just listen that's to right, the music man. and, uh, and come see the shows. And come see Buy the, the shows, merch. Man, whenever I, I announce tour dates, come out. Yeah, well, you know we'll be there, man. And guys, like you said, go listen to the music. Go check him out on social media. He's all over. He's streaming on all major platforms. I just search Roman Alexander Music, and you'll be able to find him. And while you're at it, check us out. We're all over social media as well. Just search at Bro Country Pod, Instagram, and TikTok. We're on Facebook as well. If you're still using Facebook, come check us out on there. We appreciate that. And uh, Roman, thanks again, man, for coming on. We truly appreciate your time. It's been nice getting to sit here and get to know you a little bit and chat with you about the music. Yeah, thanks, fellas. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, as always, until next time, keep it country and take care of each other.